Today we're going to be talking about polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates and the relationship between them. So to start, I have an x-y axis right here. And recall a polar coordinate. Polar is r theta. So I'm going to put a point in quadrant 1. Let's just call this some point r theta. Now if you think about the x-y axis, this is x and this is y. What if we were to connect it using a rectangular method here? So now we have x, now we have y. And notice something interesting happening. We're making a right triangle. Here's r, here's theta, and that would be 90. And from here, a couple of polar facts kind of show themselves. So I'm going to leave that picture there. And over here, I'm going to write polar facts. So we're going to use a couple of these today. Fact number one. Imagine you're standing right here. So you're just hanging out. What if we use some basic trick? Cosine theta equals x over r, since that's your adjacent over hypotenuse. And look at that. Do some algebra. x equals r cosine theta. That's a really handy fact. So let's write that down. Polar fact number one. x equals r cosine theta. So from there, you might think, well, can't we do that with sine? And we sure can. Let's say I did the other side. Sine theta equals y over r. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So by the same logic, y should equal r sine theta. So there's polar fact number two. y equals r sine theta. Polar fact number three Let's take a look at this. This is a right triangle. Let's link each of these three sides together using the Pythagorean theorem. So this one should be relatively obvious. x squared plus y squared must equal r squared. And polar fact number four is the least obvious. We just use, there's actually a number of ways to do this. I just say tan theta, because we, we've, we've used sine and cosine, so I just like using tan to mix it up a little bit, but also, it's helpful to use tan because if you look at the triangle again, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this leg and this leg. So we can write y over x. So you want to really highlight that in your notes. You don't want these four polar facts to be written down somewhere very cleanly and very easy to read. So that's so important. I'm going to 3D box that for you. And I would suggest you take a moment just to have these down. So it says find the rectangular coordinates of the points of the following polar coordinates. So there are a couple ways to do this. The easiest way is to actually use our polar facts. Look at polar fact number one and number two. X is equal to r cosine theta. Let's plug it in. x is equal to 6 cosine pi over 6. So x must be 6 times cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. x must be 3 root 3. And do the same thing for y. y is r sine theta. So I'm going to skip to that. 6 sine pi over 6. Sine pi over 6 is 1 half, so y must equal 3. And there we have it. Here's our x coordinate, here's our y coordinate. Let's put it together. It should be 3 root 3 comma 3. And there's our answer. Done. So for b, now that we've done that one, we can do it a little bit faster x equals r, which is negative 4, cosine of negative pi over 4. Remember, cosine is even, so we're just going to get rid of this thing right there. It doesn't really matter. 
So that's going to be negative 4. Cosine pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So x must be negative 2 root 2. Same thing for y. y equals negative 4 sine of negative pi over 4. Recall that sine is odd, so we're just going to move that out there. Positive 4 sine pi over 4. So y must be 4. Sine pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And there we go. y must be 2 root 2. We have our two pieces again. Let's put them together. Negative 2 root 2. Positive 2 root 2. Done. OK, now if you look at this next one, notice how it's a little bit more messy. That's OK. For a question like this, you would need a calc. So if I ever gave this to you on a tester quiz, you would definitely have a calculator because you couldn't do it otherwise. Just write it out. x equals 2.1 cosine 231 degrees. Plug it in your calculator. You get x equals negative 1.32. Next one, y equals 2.1 sine 231 degrees. Y would be negative 1.63. Now we have our two pieces. Here's our X piece. Here's our Y piece. Negative 1.32, negative 1.63. There's our answer. Now for this one, make sure your calculator, you want to make sure for this you're in degrees. That's important. Because if you look at letter D, now that might look like a rectangular coordinate, but notice how I told you it's a polar coordinate, which means this two is actually two radians. So if it helps you, maybe you want to write two comma two radians. And hopefully you remember, this is about 120 degrees, since one radian is approximately 60 degrees. So hopefully you recall that from the beginning of trig. But again, doing it's pretty easy. You just do two, that's your r, cosine of two. And again, really highlight that. You're in radians. So in your calculator, you just gotta change that to radians. You plug that in, you get negative 0.83. Y would equal two sine of two. So you plug that in, you get 1.82. And there it is, negative 0.83. 1.82. Circle that and you got it. And again, you want to make sure you understand that this is in quadrant 2. And that makes total sense because the point 2 comma 2 in polar, that's like saying 2 comma 120. So that would be like somewhere over here. Okay, hey, that's our first part. Not too bad. Now let's go to our next part. It says find polar coordinates of a point whose rectangular coordinates are 0, 3. So for a question like this, I would recommend actually just drawing it. Whenever you're going from, you're going to find a polar coordinate. So notice how we're being given the rectangular. We're going to polar. Okay, so again, we're going rectangular to polar. I always recommend you draw it. Draw. You draw it because sometimes you really don't even need a formula. We can just think about it. 0, 3, that's right up here. And look at that. We can just do it right now. We can see this distance is 3, so that's 3, comma, and you're going up, so that must be pi over 2. Done. Now there are infinite answers here because what if you didn't do pi over 2? What if you did 3 negative 3 pi over 2? That's fine too. Or what if you did um, negative 3 and 3 pi over 2? That's fine too. So there are tons of answers. So you just want to make sure you can do that, but for this one, as long as you understand this one, 
you'd be fine. Now here's our last portion. We're going to convert from rectangular to polar, but it's going to be a little bit harder. So I do recommend you draw it. That's going to be very helpful no matter what kind of coordinate you get. So negative 1 root 3, that would be somewhere over here. Yes, that's negative 1. That's root 3. Now from here, what you want to do is draw a triangle. So here's one leg, here's one leg, here's one leg. Now think about the goal, right? Our goal is to go to r comma theta. Now where is r? r is right there. So how do you find that? Well, we're going to use polar fact number three. So look back at your polar facts. Notice how we only really used one and two. Now we're going to use three and four. This is the first one. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this is negative 1. This is root 3. So I'm going to write negative 1 squared plus root 3 squared. That's r squared. Let's solve that. r squared is equal to 4. r must be 2. There's our first portion. 2 comma something. Now to find this angle theta, so of course we're looking for like that angle, but remember that that's the rotation we want. And to do that, we're just going to do an actual equation, polar fact number four. Tan theta is equal to root three over negative one. Tan theta is negative root three. And now it's like the equation chapter. Let's think about where tan theta is negative root three. That's going to be two pi over three but also 5 pi over 3. Now what's important is the picture because we can clearly see that it's in quadrant 2, which means this angle doesn't make sense. It must be 2 pi over 3. So now we plug that there, 2 pi over 3, and there we have it we've just converted a rectangular to a polar. Okay, let's try another one. 2, negative 2. So again, first step, I recommend we draw it. So let's put our x, y axis. 2, negative 2, that would be in quadrant 4. So 1, 2, 1, 2. Now I draw your triangle. This is 2, this is negative 2, and again, our goal is to get to r theta. Do the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus negative 2 squared equals r squared. So that's 4 plus 4 equals r squared. r squared must equal 8, so r must be 2 root 2. There we go. So now we have 2 root 2 comma something. Now again, we're looking for theta, right? This rotation right there. So let's do our polar fact number four. Tan theta is equal to two or negative two over two. Tan theta is negative one. So theta must be, that would be three pi over four or seven pi over four. And again, this is why the picture is important. We can see that this thing is in quadrant four which means 3 pi over 4 just doesn't make sense. It must be 7 pi over 4. So fill that in there. 7 pi over 4. And there we go. Now some people would often do a geometry trick here. You don't have to do this, but if you look at this triangle, you can see that they're both 2, which means this has to be 45 degrees. So some people just use that fact and then they go straight to it. They just say 2 root 2 comma negative 45 degrees. So this is an alternative answer. You could do that. It's just a matter of your preference. You'd have to recognize the geometry special triangle to do that though. Okay, now here's our last one. 
For this one, we will need a calculator. So I'm going to do some calculator computation on the side. We're going to first draw it. Negative 2, negative 4. So that'll be right there. Let's sketch our triangle. And this one you'll see, we need a calculator because this is not going to come out very clean. When we do our first polar fact, remember where our goal is r comma theta, negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, that's going to equal r squared. That's going to be 4 plus 16 equals r squared. r squared equals 20. So r is going to be 2 square root 5. So already we're seeing that's not a very nice number. That's not really going to work with our circle. But again, that's how we have a calculator. We have the r value, 2 root 5. We just don't know theta. So let's do our polar fact number 4 tangent is equal to negative 4 over negative 2 tan theta equals 2. So there's obviously an answer but we need a calculator. So on your calculator use arctan or tan inverse and then you're going to get theta is equal to 63.4 degrees. Now you might be thinking well that's weird because that's a quadrant one angle and this is clearly in quadrant three. So what the calculator is doing is, if you remember from the inverse chapter, the range for tangent is only negative 90 to 90, which means it's only going to give you the answer in quadrant one or four. So essentially, this angle right here is only going to give you that piece. Was actually like literally right there in the triangle. That piece. So all you got to do is think, well, if this is zero degrees and I want to get all the way there, what do I do to that number? Well, just add 180 to it. And then we're going to get 243.4. So for those count problems, you just got to think about what quadrant you're in and how to use the angle that's given. You just got to remember that this angle, the calculator one, is going to be the acute angle inside your triangle. So oftentimes you will need to work with that. 